On today's video, I'm gonna share with you my strategies and process for exporting images so that your website not only look wonderful, they're also loading up super fast and getting ranked higher with Google SEO. Let's rock and roll. Hey everybody, what is up? And the question that I get a lot when talking to other web designers is how do you export your images? How do you optimize them to make sure that they are small enough but also look wonderful? And today I wanna go through how I think about this and how, like what are your options? And hopefully this will help you make things faster, better for your next web design. So let's dive right into it. How do we optimize images for the web? The first key concept, as I said, is that smaller file size are better. That is because people don't like waiting and the faster the website loads, the better. There's tons of research about it. Website that loads low, um, slower actually lose sales and that kind of stuff. And so Google, when they see huge file size for images, they're actually ranking you lower because your images are maybe just too big and your website is just too small and Google can predict people are not gonna like this so they're ranking you even lower. So the one thing that you wanna consider at all time is how can I make my files as small as possible? However, I'm a designer and I wanna make sure that the website that I design looks amazing. So how can we find that perfect sweet spot between smallest file size possible and best quality? So the first question that you need to ask yourself when you're going, to the export process, you finish your design in whatever software you're working on. Now you have to think about the question, what is the right file format um, for myself, right? Okay, so let's go over, you probably know some of them, but let's talk about pros and cons and why you would use each of them. The first one is JPEG, which probably everybody knows because most of the images on the web are JPEGs. And you use images when you have photos or when you have images that are using the whole you know, size, the whole area with pixels, colorful pixels like this image that we have here. The next possibility that we have is a PNG. And a PNG, what a PNG does is it's basically an image, but that also supports, besides color of pixel, also um, supports transparency, which means as we can see here, we, we can see the dog, but some of the pixels um, around it are actually transparent because images are always by nature um, rectangulars. So here we have transparent, um, transparent background, which means we can overlay things and it, it looks better. So when you need to use transparency, you're gonna use PNG. The last format is SVG, which is actually a vector format. In this case, we only have kind of a few lines of code that describes the where the shape is and the benefit of using this format, um, first of all, it's the smallest because it's just it has no, all the details. It's just basically a shape with colors, but it's also infinitely scalable because vectors, unlike pixels, um, they are just, you know, points in space and you can use that to scale it up. So it can be, even if it's a huge, huge, huge icon or SVG or shape or whatever, it's still going to be the same size. There is no effect when you make the image smaller, uh, when you make the image larger, right? It's the same file format where when you use an image, something like a JPEG, if you wanna make it bigger, it's gonna mean that the file is going to be heavier. So that's one thing to consider when you're using SVGs. So basically, there's one more that I just wanna quickly cover, even though I don't use it, and it's called WebP. It's kind of the new kid on the block. It's basically a format that was developed recently by, um, actually a couple of years ago by Google, and that's basically a higher-end compression for JPEGs. So that means that you can get the same high quality of a good, good JPEG, but on a much, much smaller size. The problem is this, since it was developed by Google, not everybody is supporting it yet. So, for, and the biggest problem is actually Safari, so iOS devices and, and general and Macs. So everybody who works on Safari, which is quite a big browser, does not support this at this point. And so I don't use this because I want my websites to be you know, accessible by everybody. Um, but it is something that you might consider and you can use some elaborate kind of codes to say if they're on a different browser, then show them the smaller image, you can do that, I never do that, um, but it's probably something that we need to uh, keep our eyes on because in the future it's probably, or it might even replace JPEG. So 
with the, with the ones that I actually use, this is how you think about them, right? So SVGs are the smallest, JPEGs are kind of like the medium range and PNG are the largest file size because again, besides showing the, uh, describing the file, just the colors of every pixel, it also has to describe how much opacity it has. So it's the largest file size. So ideally you'd want to uh, work from the smallest to the largest. Like, can I make this an SVG? No, because it's not a vector, it's an image. Okay, uh, does it has to have transparency? If it doesn't have, I can use a, a JPEG, but only if it's, it must be kind of an image that has transparency, then I'm going to use PNG. So that's kind of how I think about which file size should I use. Now, the next thing is, to consider is you need to export with the right size. So as we said, with SVG, this doesn't matter at all because SVG is kind of like size ignorant, it's vector. But when you're exporting JPEGs and um, PNGs, you really need to consider what is the size, how many pixels am I exporting? Because more pixels equals bigger file size. So the way I think about this is you need to be aware, you need to do the exact right size, right? And where people struggle is, let me give you an example. Let me go here to a sketch file and maybe go to the Flux website. So when you have images inside the website like this image, it's pretty easy, right? Because you can see here on the right size how big it is, right? Um, width and height. And you can just set the export here. And probably you want to export at 2 X, which means to double the size because a lot of screens these days are retina size, which means they show double the pixels. So you want to export at 2x, right? So it's pretty easy. You go here and you do 2x of your size. The problem is with images that are like this image that are actually coast to coast, right? They take up the whole screen and and you don't really know how wide the screen is, right? People, some people have a super wide screen. Some people, there's no standard for what the screen size is. So how do you know how large to export this? And again, this can be very, very, very large because as you can see this, let's say the, the default here in Sketch is um, 14, 14,000 or 1400 pixels width. And so if I would double this now, if I would export this hero image here at 2X, that would lead us to 2,800 pixels width. That's a very, very large image. Um, and it's gonna probably um, wait a lot. So my, my the way I do things is I have kind of a minimum right? And my minimum is 2000 for wide pictures that take up the whole width of the website. I export them at least at 2000 pixels. Now I say at least because for some images, that's okay. You're going to have to export, then put it on the website and test on multiple machines and see if that picture scales. Um, and how did that look when it scales? Because some pictures, for example, if you have close-ups of people, then when that image scales up and it's being scaled because you're not going to really export it the like in the biggest size possible, right? So let's imagine some people work on a wide screen, which is let's say 3,000 pixels. If you want to really, and that routine, and that is kind of a retina display, so maybe it's the new 16 inch Mac or something like that. If you really want to use all the pixels, you're going to have to export something like 6,000 pixel width. And that would be just like a huge, huge, huge um, image. You're not going to do that. So you probably want to export something around 2,000 pixels. Now, what will happen on this big screen is that, you know, the image will be stretched and some images stretch better and some images stretch not as good. And so you'd really have to see, and that really depends on the, you know, on the image itself. So for this kind of image, because it, there's not really like a close up on my face and it's okay that it's not super, super, super sharp. I think that, um, I don't remember exactly. I think I've exported them at 2000 pixels width, but also if I just export from here at 2X, that would be 2800. That's probably like a good, a good size. Um, but I wouldn't do more than 3000 pixels because I think that would just create a huge, huge file size. Now I wanna talk about how actually we export it um, to make sure that the file is best compressed because, and I work a lot with Sketch, Sketch does not export very well, at least images. Um, 
So here's here's an example here, and this is the same. It's like uh, 1400 pixels width, and we have this image here. If I would go here and export it as a JPEG, because this is an, a JPEG at 2x, and uh, let's see, let's just put it on my desktop and call this a sketch. So let's see how this image would turn out. So on my desktop, there's sketch. That image is, is four megabytes, which is huge, huge file. It's actually, it's crazy. It's actually bigger than the original image, and even though this is actually scaled down. So this is, as you can see, sketch doesn't really compress the images. And you can, when you're clicking export, you do have JPEG quality here, but since I don't have visibility into what happens when I compress this, I usually leave it at 100 because I'm not, I can't really trust their compression, so I don't really trust them. Again, I don't know what will happen. So what I usually do in this case, I might open it up in Photoshop because Photoshop has something that's called Save for Web. So I click Shift Alt Command S. Not sure really where to find this, but it's yeah, Save for the Web. So now what happens here is that you have a bunch of presets for export, and you have let's go with JPEG high, for example. Um, and this is, they set this quality 60, but now you can actually look at the image and say, does this look good enough? And already, by the way, look, this is 600K. So this is already like almost 10 times smaller or maybe seven times smaller than the image that was exported by Sketch. Let's drop it down from JPEG high to JPEG minimum, um, medium. Honestly, I look at the image, I see it change, but not that much. It's not critical. I think we can go with that in this case. And now it's lower to even 200K. So this is, I would probably go here and export using this save for web, which is great when it comes to optimizing JPEGs. However, when I'm exporting, let's say I want to export this as a PNG. So I'm going to go here export. I'm going to select PNG 2x. Let's see how big this is. Let's call this sketch PNG. And let's open the PNG. So first of all, let's see how big the file is. So the file is 800k, right? Now the thing about PNG is if I'm going to do save for web here, and I'm going to do PNG, um, you see, I don't have much compression um, options here to reduce this file. Actually, when I'm saving it from Photoshop, it is being reduced to 780, uh, but it's not like really huge. It's only 100K reduced. So PNGs, save for web or Photoshop, is not great for reducing the size of PNGs. But for that, I usually you go with, let me bring this up here. I go with tiny PNG, which is a really, really great service to compress PNGs. It also compresses uh, JPEGs, but I use it mainly for PNGs. So let's drop that one in. That's 100K and bam, that has been reduced 70% into 200K. Let's download that and open it up in Photoshop. Now, honestly, I put it one next to another. You can tell the difference. So this is like literally, it looks great. It's like 70% lower file size. And yeah, so again, tiny PNG, really, really, really great and phenomenal for making sure that the PNGs are smaller file size. So this is how I do my compressing when it comes down to files. Now, one more thing that you need to remember is that when people see your uh, website on mobile when because your website is obviously mobile responsive the images are much smaller right because this the, even if you had like 2000 pixels uh, image on a uh, on a desktop there's no use for loading up 2000 pixels to a screen which is maximum of I don't know, let's say 700 pixels. It, there's just no use to load such a huge file. So what you want to do is have different sizes of images for your mobile. So you actually create another version and export different images. And then using the code, when you develop the website, you make sure that the smaller images are being loaded when you load the mobile version of your website. Now, by the way, I work with Webflow, which is amazing because Webflow does that automatically for you. So you just upload the large images. It creates versions, smaller versions of the image and make sure that the code loads them. So this is basically saving up 
a lot of time for me, but if I wouldn't use Webflow, I would probably have to create, you know, the different versions, mobile versions in my sketch and export three times, probably for, you know, desktop, maybe um, tablet and mobile, would have to export three times as many images, but you need to consider this. The last thing that I want you to remember or consider is to make sure that your names for the files make sense. This really matters in terms of Google SEO. So if you see a dog in the image, write a dog in the image. Also use alt tags. Alt tags means the alternative tags when you're developing. This is for accessibility um, purposes. And we had a video about accessibility. We can look here or we'll try to link this. But this means that for people with, you know, uh, people who are blind and they're using devices to read to them what's on the screen, having this alt tag, um, meaning that they will understand what other people can see in this image. Basically, it says with words what's in this image. And this also helps to make sure that your website is optimized and gets all the SEO juices that are needed. All right. Hope this was helpful for you. If you've got your own tactics for um, exporting images and compressing them, let me know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next video.